So um, I'm Davis Hart. I'm the product lead for GameShift, a product uh, by Salon Labs in the gaming space. Um, we're going to do a little bit of a launch announcement in a minute, but before I get there, I want to give you a little bit of context uh, just to set the stage. So for those who aren't familiar, Solana Labs is the entity that built the Solana blockchain. And now we're really focused on investing in and building projects to help move the ecosystem forward. But we're looking very specifically for use cases where we think we can add some unique value, just given where we sit in the ecosystem. And over the last year, we've spent a lot of time researching some different opportunities. And we've spoken with a lot of game studios and game developers and really built conviction that gaming is a space where we can make a difference. So why games? There we go. Um, games are sort of in this constant state of evolution. Games are always having to evolve their gameplay and their player experience to attract and retain players. And this is really setting this, set the foundation for us in the space. We spent a lot of time looking at this, and we realized there's two ways that games historically have delivered on that need for evolution that got us really excited. The first is technology. Games have historically been rapid adopters of new technology that can power new gameplay. Games went from console to desktop to mobile, powered by advancements in hardware. They went from single player to multiplayer online, powered by adoption of broadband internet. They went from uh, a, a, the entire category of idle gaming, I would argue is powered by game platforms like uh, web and mobile that can deliver an immersive game experience at times and places that players historically were not able to play games. So games have always been ripe for new technology. So that's, that's the first point. And then the second is what I like to talk about is meta play, uh, metagaming or complexity layering. Um, this is best I think this is best explained through uh, a personal experience I had a number of years ago playing this game called Grand Theft Auto 3. I know I'm dating myself with this reference, but bear with me. When Grand Theft Auto 3 came out, you could go into that game, you could play the whole game, but when you got into a taxi, you dropped into a mini game where you were a taxi driver and you would pick up fares, drive them around the city, you'd get bonuses. And what struck me in that moment was that that game a few years prior had been sold as its own game called Crazy Taxi. And GTA 3 just picked it up and put it in their game. And what that allows games to do by creating these mini games or meta games is to engage new sets of players in different ways. And so a single game can appeal to different types of players, thereby broadening the audience. And we think that blockchain can uniquely de deliver on both new technology and meta gaming. And we're seeing early product market fit on Solana. We've seen a number of games launch on Solana, scale up, attract a large number of gamers, and drive transactional volumes on Solana that for an individual game rivals or exceeds the entire volume of transactions on other L1s or L2s. So we've seen positive progress. And it really starts with asset ownership. Asset ownership, uh, games have been playing with asset ownership for a number of years. Blockchain came along and made asset ownership real. And that attracted a certain segment of player but arguably the segment of player that is attracted to a game simply because they can actually own their assets is not growing at the rate that we might like it to. And so we think that it's important to look beyond just ownership for the sake of ownership and more towards what can you do once you enable asset ownership in a game. And this comes back to the metagaming point. There's so many different things you can do when you go beyond just the ownership aspect. These are just some examples. You can give players different ways to level up in the game. Some players may want to earn. Some players may want to buy their experience or buy their assets. Different way to engage. Some, uh, players can trade assets. And for some, that's a way that they can augment or change the way they interact with the game. For others, the trading is the game. With asset ownership, users are incentivized to participate in game creation through user-generated content and now em emerging user-generated game logic. When you get into asset sharing, you can build more productive factions and guilds by allowing users to share assets among each other. And lastly, asset lending, again, a way that gamers can borrow assets for a few days, they can change the way they're playing the game, they can go back to the way they were playing it a few days ago, and on the other side, you have gamers that asset lending being the lender is the game itself. Imagine if you put all of this into a single game, the number of different types of players that you can engage with the same game. And so we got to this point, and the question that kept looming in my mind was, well, why do this on blockchain? 
Like, what is blockchain uniquely positioned to do here? And it really comes down to three specific things, cost, risk, and composability. Blockchain delivers lower development costs in a number of different ways. And it really starts with, blockchains come with the transactional infrastructure built in. Now, my background is in accounting and payments, and I built systems in those, in those domains. And I can tell you that debits and credits seem simple, but they're incredibly complicated to engineer. And so the mere fact that blockchain just gives this to you out of the box, I think is one of the most underappreciated aspects of this technology. But beyond that, you get the benefit of reusability, right? You can pick up programs on chain that power trading, transfers, lending, and so on, and you don't have to pay to acquire that software. And lastly, the more games that are on a single chain, the more games that are using those reusable programs, that decreases the cost of interoperability because we are just adopting a standard by de facto. When it comes to risk, as you're powering asset ownership in your game and those assets are becoming more valuable, you're bringing more regulatory risk around custody and more security risk around those assets. And by engaging with blockchain, you can offload some of those risks onto the chain itself through the proven security model and through user asset self-custody. And lastly, with composability, not only can you pick up those programs for free on chain, but now you can assemble those together in different ways and sort of create this combinatorial a uh, set of possibilities of how you can build the experience in the game and engage more players. So you get a sense of why we're excited about gaming. The conclusion we came to was that, surprise, surprise, building games is already really hard. There are developers in the room, you know this. It's a multidisciplinary task to build a game. And asking a developer to now take on the blockchain components as well is just a bridge too far for a lot of developers that we spoke with. And what we found is, this is true regardless of whether you're a Web 2 game studio or a Web 3 game studio. What we discovered is both types of studios building both types of games, at this point, largely are trying to achieve the same thing, which is build a better game with better features for players. And we're moving away from a world where we're building a blockchain game for blockchain players. That will continue to exist. But what we've seen in the trends that we've seen is that studios are sort of moving to the middle of just better features in the games. And what we found is studios have two problems, regardless of where you're coming from, Web 2, Web 3. The first is just development costs and having to have the, ex the expertise on staff. And then the second is the difficulty of building a very Web 2 friendly gameplay experience so that you can attract the broadest possible audience. And essentially do that without creating friction around blockchain that could turn some players away. To get a little bit more specific about that, let's imagine that you're building uh, the blockchain component into a game, and you want to get yourself just to the point of, I'm, I'm able to sell users' assets, and they can trade with each other. What do you have to do? You need to figure out a wallet situation. right? And wallets uh, are already difficult in terms of how they present key management and transaction signing. Payments is very difficult. As a crypto company, it can be very hard to find payments relationships. And when you do, they tend to have higher decline rates and higher fraud rates. When it comes to the asset itself, the NFT, I think we can all agree that after the last 18 months, anything with the word token in it contains a bit of a stigma that can turn a lot of players off in some studios. And lastly, when it comes to trading, if you want to enable users to trade assets and you put them into a more traditional um, NFT trading platform on chain, it looks a little bit more like a Bloomberg terminal than a game. And that can, of course, create some friction for players. And of course, everything is listed in terms of soul, which again, we have the, the token problem. And now you might be looking at this and saying, hey, Davis, there are vendors that actually solve for these individual verticals. And we would actually agree. The challenge that we discovered speaking with studios is going and finding the vendors, knowing what questions to ask, doing the diligence, doing the contracting, getting them all to work together, and so on and so forth, was almost as difficult or more difficult than just going and building it themselves. And so what we discovered is there was a gap here. And so this is why we built GameShift. GameShift is a single Web2 friendly API that wraps all of the blockchain experiences that a game might want to bring in. We're covering the four verticals to start with asset management, asset ownership, fiat payments, and asset trading. We're doing this in a single, a single product, a single pane of glass. And what this allows is for developers to bring blockchain into their game without any blockchain programming experience. And it also allows them to develop a player experience that doesn't even reference blockchain at all. So you get a full Web 2 front and back. Lastly, when we set out to build the product, 
we knew we could achieve this by building a, a walled garden or a closed ecosystem and just doing this in a private way. For a number of reasons, we decided that did not make sense. And so we've retained in the product the ability for players to move assets out into the broader ecosystem. And where we've been able to, we've integrated on the back end with existing uh, protocols and dApps to make sure that this is as open of an ecosystem as possible. So specifically, what we're launching within those four verticals. For wallets, we're providing fully user self-custodied wallets with a Web2 UX, so that looks a little bit more like a two-factor auth that we're all very familiar with. And again, retaining asset portability, so players can remove assets onto the chain if they want to. In the payments domain, we're supporting uh, credit card payments in 170 countries, 100% chargeback guarantee, and uh, with settlement in fiat to game studios that may not want to touch crypto tokens. In game asset management, we're supporting uh, asset minting on demand with compressed NFTs, and that includes fully decentralized storage. And lastly, in marketplace, we're empowering game studios to build in-game branded marketplaces with buying and selling in US dollars, not crypto tokens, but still integrated with external liquidity pools to give uh, players the best possible price. And across all of these domains, the way we've integrated it together, developers never need to have a developer wallet. Users never have to have a, their own wallet coming in. No one has to deal with sole tokens. No one has to pay gas fees. And no one has to manage keys. We take care of all of that in the back end. And so when we set out to put all these pieces together, we asked ourselves, is it better to build all of this for ourselves, or is it better to partner with the ecosystem? We went out, we did all that vendor diligence, and we found some excellent partners to help deliver this product. So I'm really happy to say that we've been able to build GameShift with cooperation from the broader ecosystem. We're working with MetaKeep for uh, their amazing self-custody wallets. They're super smooth for users. We're working with CrossMint for their uh, compressed NFT minting. We're working with CoinFlow for fiat payments acceptance. And so with that, I'm extremely proud to announce that GameShift is now in open beta. Yes. The QR code will stay up for a little bit. I encourage you to scan that to get started. Um, quick anecdote, I was speaking with a game studio today. Uh, they explained to me that they, they went through the wallet question. It took them five months to go from the, asking the question, how are we going to give users wallets to building their own product? Vendor diligence, construction, so on and so forth. Meanwhile, we had a developer build a demo game for us, and I was speaking with him the other night, and he said it took him one hour to integrate all the blockchain features of GameShift. Just to give you a sense. You can clap. That's good. That's good. Um, what we're starting with is just the foundation. I want to give you a taste of where we're going for here, from here. We're really excited in particular about three areas. The first is more activities around assets. Lending, crafting, loot boxes, decomposition, all the things that you can allow players to do with the assets in the game. The second is gamer identity. Uh, we're looking at ways that we can give gamers their own identity that, uh, that encapsulates assets, experience points, uh, game moments, and exploring the ways that we can help games bring players between games uh, with that singular profile. And then lastly, in sort of related to gamer identity and gamer profile, is building out more tooling to support better factions and guild-based play, as well as more broadly social experiences that help gamers interact with each other, um, again, around that consolidated profile. And so with that, I encourage you all to scan the QR code, hit the website, take a look at our docs, sign up for a developer account, get started. And on the website, you'll find a link for office hours. The whole team is here for the remainder of the conference. We would love to speak with anyone. Uh, at all, whether you're building a game or not. Uh, so feel free to uh, grab office hours, and if you see any of us in the hallway, please don't hesitate to stop and start a conversation. Thank you all for coming out.